Hi guys, welcome back. Today what I want to show you is how I make deeper style synths. So on this channel and within the academy, I've been making very happy synths and groovy synths. And today what I want to show you is how to make synths slightly deeper. Someone actually asked me this question in the academy, how to make synths that are a bit more dark, a bit more deep. And I actually couldn't come up verbally with an answer to that. I think it's something really hard to try and explain verbally. So instead what I've done, I've gone away and I've figured out this technique. Now I'm going to heavily use a sequencer in this. It's a new sequencer that I've been trying out and it's a sequencer I use for this style of synth. If I'm, if I'm feeling uninspired, I don't want to write them myself. It's really handy to have. It's actually become one of my favorite sequences. It's nothing new. I will pop it up on screen here because I don't actually know the name of this sequencer. It's, it's hard to pronounce. I don't, I'm not even going to bother trying. So without further ado, let's jump into Ableton. And let's get on with it. Okay, so. I have these synths that I've made already. Usually I would show you how to make this from scratch. However, I'm just gonna show you the kind of technique behind it so you can run on your own direction with it as it's very specific to you and your taste. What I want to show you mainly is this bloody sequencer. Essentially what I'm doing with these synths is I'm making them on grid. So if I were to go for a, a groovy synth line like you will hear in the kind of pib sound or sounds, you know, the, the, the common house sound at the moment, deep house sound, they're very groovy, they're very off grid. What I mean by on grid is I'm gonna make a synth in a second, or I have already made a synth that has, um, let me just break this down a little bit so it's easier to see. So I'm going to make a synth that literally hits on the kick on the first one and then on the open hat of the second bar and then on the kick again and on the open hat. And then it's going to give me this effect. Let me show you. As you can hear, let me play all the synths together. Very, very deep. And the reason for that, it's, I find I, when I make music, if I want to go on a deeper, in a deeper direction, I usually will have my synths hitting on grid a bit more than I would if they were, go, if I was going for like a groovy, happy song. I don't know why. I don't know if that's a technique that is a known thing. It's just what I do personally. And if I do it, I'm going to come on here and show you guys how to do it as well as it works for me. So... How did I make these? I'm going to go ahead and just show you this sequencer. In fact, I'll, I've got one open already, so let me show you in here. So essentially what this does is it going off the steps. Usually when you do steps on a, on a sequencer, you can apply swing and they will start hitting off the grid. However, with this one, it will manipulate it and it will put the steps in so they're even. Let me just duplicate one of these channels and I'll delete the process in so we can see that. So to make it easier, let me pull this one out of the group and I will show you with this a different color so we can differentiate between the two. So this monopoly at the bottom is what we're looking at. And imagine I've just pulled this sequencer out and I'm just gonna delete all the processing. And I've got a sound coming from the Monopoly. So if I pull the events down, when you first pull out the sequencer, it will have one event. What that means, events essentially are a note, a MIDI note. If I start adding more events to the sequencer, it will put more events in and it will put them in evenly. As you can see, it's put it at the bottom of this circle uh, directly below parallel to the one at the top. So that will be an even match. It's playing it perfectly on grid and evenly as well. So if I do the events up a bit, if we go to an odd number, like number three, this is where it starts getting interesting for me. It kind of plays. It feels a bit like a polyrhythm, even though it's not. So if I play it with the kick, starts getting an interesting pattern. Now, I think it works best when I put it on number five and it gives me this sort of vibe. And if we start manipulating that with processing as I have done here, I start getting some nice effects from it. Well, what I believe are nice effects. Mm -hmm. 
let's hear just that on its own with the beat. This is just a loop I've thrown together for the purpose of this demonstration, so don't judge me on this. But it starts getting interesting when we start layering these up, as I have done here. So let me delete the one I was just demonstrating, because we actually have that already in here. If I start layering these up, as you can see, I've got four on top of each other playing different rhythms. We get like a kind of deep pad sound and the one above. So this one is more of a pad and the reason I've done this is to show you the difference. As you can hear, this one changes in pitch as well. The reason for that is if I, I click on the steps number blue at the bottom, I have changed within the sequencer. You can open up the sequencer here and you can change the pitch of the notes that are playing. I've then put a scale afterwards so it stays in the key of my track and then we can start adding some delay but I've left that off for now as it works better without took out the low end and then I put some chorus on it to spread it out a little bit and we get a pad sound now so together something super interesting let's hear that with the track I can automate them now throughout the track and bring some in, take some out. I can make it interesting over time. I guess what I'm doing when I'm doing this is I'm instead of what I would do when I am playing synths usually, and I kind of put them in with the groove of the track, I imagine this is kind of sat on top of the track instead. It kind of rides on top of it rather than in it, in my personal opinion anyway. This won't add groove to your track remember that this isn't going to make your track groovy but for these darker vibes these more underground vibes that's okay i don't mind it's just kind of a a deep feeling to it it's kind of taking my track from a, an 11 p.m track to a 6 a.m track in my eyes and remember these synths where they're really common and people can latch onto them because they're on the grid will work really well in a club as it's kind of rolling on top of the track, it will kind of differentiate the track a little bit and, and give the listener something to, to work with. Not only that, it really works well in the break. When we go into the break, as you can see here in the break, we can, we can really manipulate these and we could maybe just take some out and it could, And then when it drops, I could drop these ones in, maybe. I think personally that gives it a really nice effect. Again, this is nothing that I've ever learned and ever been taught. This is just experimentation. This is what I recommend you do. Find a new sequencer, find anything, and just experiment and, and kind of get your own your own take on things, to be honest. This, this, what I've just said there was all subjective. This is what I imagine would work well. This is what I think sounds good. It doesn't matter, really, if anyone else does. This is my own technique that I'm now sharing with you guys, but I think it's a technique that really does work. If you're going for a deeper vibe, try moving your sims on grid and letting them roll on top of the track rather than in the track. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. If it has, please drop me a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out. Also, check out the Academy if you want to see full in-depth tutorials where I make music start to finish and show you how to too. Check it out. The link's in the description, and I'll catch you on the next one.